needs a little bit of light here light on the situation yes thank you very much um, well I'm back and it's uh, been about two days since my last compilation believe it or not um, I'm back from uh, my uh, doctor yesterday so this is day two now from uh, my original uh, uh, compilation of uh, my talk to my computer series and uh, this would be part four. Uh, I kind of got cut off abruptly uh, in the last fourth part but essentially I ended on the note that I hated to see little children hurt and uh, somewhere through there I may have uh, blessed the uh, viewer, listener, hopefully more of a listener than a viewer uh, for uh, I mean, I don't know how long somebody can, you know, stare at a video uh, where the camera's just pointed at uh, the circuitry of a 1366 uh, LGA 1366 motherboard, but I'm guessing that they, they wouldn't be looking at it very long. But I'm hoping they'd be listening to it, you know, while they went through their emails and did what else they do on the uh, PC. I'm hoping they'd be listening to my presentation because my presentation is uh, essentially of an audio uh, quality it's not uh, designed or made to be watched it's made to be listened to and uh, most of my videos are by the way although I have some walkabout videos that might show some interesting flora and fauna uh, I'm more concerned that people are listening to what I'm saying I feel that I have a little bit of authority now to talk to people, to the public at large, because um, I've lived well over half a century on this planet, and uh, I've had a fairly rich life. I've uh, lived on all sides. I've rubbed elbows with the wealthiest people. I've, uh, you know, uh, you know, rode around in Porsches and Jaguars and you name it. You know, I've seen how the rich live. Um, I'm, I've also lived. Uh, right on the streets, you know, um, uh, I, I know what it's like to uh, sleep in, in, in a parked car because I have nowhere else to sleep, uh, you know, I, I know what it's like to uh, sleep on the dirt for that matter because I had nowhere else to sleep. Um, you know, I've had, a, I've had a fairly rich life. Uh, I, I know, you know, what it's like to brave the elements to survive and I know what it's like to um, become uh, uh, an employee of the corporate zombie system and uh, you know I know what it's like to raise a family uh, I'm, I'm working on my, my second one here uh, as some would say my second family in truth <laughs> any child I fathered is my family and um, you know I, I, I have not disowned any of my family um, so, you know, I, when people say, oh, your second family, I kind of give them a questioning look like, what do you mean my second family? Um, my family is my family. But, um, yes, and I really do hate to see little children hurt. Um, you know, little children did not ask to be born. I know there's a lot of new agers out there that may beg to differ. They can beg all they wish. I'm not going to agree that little children asked to be brought into this world uh, that that is a, a, a totally ridiculous um, nonsensical belief and I do not believe that little children ask to be brought into this world now <clears throat> we have an obligation to little children all around the planet it doesn't matter uh, you know whether born in our country or our nation uh, Okay, we have an obligation as adults uh, to little children. All right, I, I, I want that to sink in. Give, give me a moment here. My insides sort of feel all kind of chopped up and cut up. I guess they took all kinds of samples. I don't know what happened to me, but all my, my insights, they feel all lacerated. So I'm, I'm, just give me a moment here. I'm going to take a, 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 a painkiller 
uh, my medical procedure was uh, was uh, uh, successful, but I'm, I feel all kind of lacerated, all all cut up inside. Yeah, I, I didn't expect that. The last uh, gastroscopy that I had 12 years ago never left that effect in me where it was like somebody just went down my throat with a blender or something, you know. It's <laughs> but I, I guess they took a lot of different samples from different areas. Uh, he was very thorough this time. And um, anyway, uh, what I, what I want to say is that... Um, Anything that involves uh, the, the needless suffering of little children um, does not have God's blessing. Now, how do I know it doesn't have God's blessing? Because uh, our teacher, our great teacher, um, Christ Jesus, since I'm speaking English here, I'm going to say Christ Jesus. You know, if you speak Hebrew and you come from a Hebrew background, and your ethnicity is Hebrew, and that's that. That is, you know, your your mother tongue. Okay, I'm I'm referring to Yeshua. Otherwise, if you don't speak Hebrew and you're a Hebrew wannabe, uh, well, um, and 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 English is your mother tongue. I'm going to say Jesus. All right. Uh, enough of this uh, nonsense about these sacred namer people. I, I I don't have time for this. All right, we know of whom we speak. We speak of that one who uh, died on Calvary, okay, for our sakes, for our souls, to draw all nations, all nations, not just one nation, all nations to him, and uh, for the sake of all humanity. Now, that's the truth. That's uh, uh, whom uh, Yeshua, Jesus, the Christ died for all humanity okay that includes all Asians um, that 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 includes all dare I use the educated word Negro people okay I don't mean that condescendingly um, you know I, I should I get up in arms if somebody calls me Caucasian should I call somebody a racist because they call me Caucasian you know I'm, I'm more offended when people call me white because that's so that is, is so inaccurate. I'm not white. You, you know, even when I came out of my uh, my uh, uh, medical procedure here, where I'm about, you know, you get as pale as, as, as you possibly can. You know, I hold a white piece of paper up to my face just to have a look, you know. I'm, guess what? That white sheet of paper and my skin color do not match. Not nearly. No, sir. I've got all kinds of different tones and colors in my face there. And yet I'm pale. But I'm not white. I think uh, the native uh, aboriginal, uh, if we call him that, uh, in North America uh, was uh, far more accurate when they called uh, the colonialists that came to this uh, great country pale face. Yes, uh, my, my, my skin type is very pale compared to those uh, uh, who have more melanin. And, uh, you know... Um, I, I uh, praise those people uh, who were blessed with protection in their skin and have uh, some measure of melanin to protect them against the elements. Uh, I, I sort of wish I had more of it uh, and any of uh, my pale skinned brothers and sisters have experienced a severe sunburn I think would be inclined to agree that it sure is nice to have some kind of protection. It sure would be nice. Uh, not to blister and bleed in the sun. Anyway, I'm just saying. I mean, you know, don't hold it against me now because I call myself Caucasian. Um, but, um, you know, I believe Jesus died for all oh. people. All That's people. Really and uh, I'm just testing something here. People looking for... Yeah, I was just testing uh, one of my uploads. Uh, and that, that's part three that I'm preparing to upload, by the way. Uh, Jesus died for all humanity, all mankind, okay? Asians, uh, ethnic Africans, uh, um, you know, uh, brown-skinned people, uh, uh, light-skinned people. I've never met a white 
skinned person in my entire life. Uh, I think a corpse came comes about as close as it gets. That, that's a gray skinned sort of person that is still not white. You know, you take a, a, a sheet of paper, you, a white paper, you hold it up against a corpse. Guess what? It's not the same color. So where do we get white from? Okay. I, I, I met a man once uh, from, uh, where was it? Uh, uh he, he came from, he, I mean, this guy came directly from Africa, uh, but a uh, very well-educated man. I met him at a, a, a bus. Uh, 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 it's funny, I always meet these men at bus. That, that's interesting. Um, this, this, is, this is many, many, many moons back. His name was Kingsley. And, um, or at least that was uh, his given name, Kingsley. And uh, interesting man, Kingsley was, uh, Nigeria. Uh, his skin was almost like navy blue color, had a navy blue sheen to it, you know. I mean, he was so dark, it had, had a blue tone to it, you know. He wasn't black. Hello, I'm sorry people, but guess what? He was not black. His skin was just a, a dark, rich, almost a blue base brown. You know what I'm saying? It was so dark that it had a blue tone to it and it, it looked awesome it really did the guy had uh, 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 protection on top of his protection okay I imagine that guy could have stood in scorching 120 degrees above zero sunshine no shade and it wouldn't have phased him you know he was so protected uh, you know it's nice to have protection okay but uh, you know God saw fit to give me what I have and uh, there are problems that way too I understand with protection I understand that, uh, uh, that, that unfortunately that much melanin can also result in uh, other forms of skin cancer I found out so you know we, we, we should be content with what we are and what we have because uh, there, there's always pluses and minuses on both sides and uh, so I, I praise God for, for, for the way he made me and uh, I just want to point out that, that Jesus died for all nations. And he even explains before his crucifixion, yes, he was crucified. Yes, he was crucified. And yes, he did rise. Uh, he is risen. Okay, um, I know that there are some people of a different belief. But no, he was crucified and he is risen. And I don't deny the crucifixion. I do not deny the shedding of the blood of Christ. Okay, I don't deny that. Uh, but uh, uh, he, he died to draw all nations to him. And he even said so before he was crucified. That this was the purpose for his crucifixion. To draw all nations to him. And that's the purpose for which he was lifted up. And, uh, you know, uh, I know there are people who say that that didn't happen. Um, it happened. It happened. All right. And uh, I know that it's really hard for us to believe in our rational minds how anyone could be crucified and all their blood be shed. Uh, and yet here they are, you know, walking about and talking. Um, and that's where, you know, we have the example of uh, Thomas who doubted and uh, declared that unless he put his hand right inside the hole where Christ was speared uh, by that Roman soldier and all the blood and water was let out, um, that uh, he would not believe that he really was uh, Yeshua, uh, uh, Christ Jesus, the Messiah. And so Christ did appear to him uh, rather suddenly, of course, because they were all hiding from the Romans you know, behind a locked door inside a building. So how Christ just magically, if I dare use that word, appeared, because it wasn't really magic. It was the power of the Almighty God that uh, uh, permitted the person, the person of the Almighty God, to appear uh, to Thomas. And when Thomas inserted his hand in his thigh and uh, saw the, uh, the nail holes in his hands, uh, Thomas dropped to his knees and declared, My Lord and my God. That's acceptable. Because Christ is the only person of God who is God. 
And uh, I guess because of that declaration, that makes me a Christian. That's where all resemblances stop, my friends. Because I do also believe, as the Muslims do, that God is one in every way, and there is no way wherein God is not one. Okay, that this was the personal manifestation of the Almighty God, and that the Almighty God actually humbled himself before mankind, loving mankind so much, and valuing mankind so much, that he even allowed his very essence to be born of a woman in the flesh. For our sakes, for our sakes. And the reason for this is, is because I do also believe that the Adam was indeed created in the image of God. Therefore, we are not without uh, we 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 are not with excuse. There is no excuse for us. Okay, we 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 have no reason to turn our backs on God because something in us cries out to God all the time, all the time. Okay, we know, you know, we cry out to our Father all the time. Something in our very natures seeks to know God or desires to know our maker, our creator, our father. None of the other animals have this. Okay? And yes, notice how I said none of the other animals have this. We are animated. I know there are pastors that go around saying, no, we're not animals. Well, I've got news. I got. I beg to differ. We are animated creatures. Creature means creation. And we were created by God. Okay? And we are animated. That means we move about. Okay? We're animals. Whether we like it or not, every human being is an animal. Okay? We are not just uh, mere beasts, although the Bible does say that some of us are just brute beasts. But without the Spirit of God, what else would we be? Without, you know, the Spirit of the Almighty, what, what else would we be but brute beasts? And so, unfortunately we have uh, strayed so far away from our maker from our creator and um, you know reduced ourselves to this despicable uh, status of brute beasts now I don't think there's any reason at all for us becoming this way uh, other than that there is an enemy uh, and uh, we have listened to the voice of the enemy uh, far too long and I think it's time that we should understand that uh, the reason Christ died on that cross was to unify us all and for us to realize that we really are all brothers and sisters and that uh, we really should all get along. And, uh, you know, each of us has a, um, a section of truth. Each of us has... Uh, uh, you know, some measure of truth. And we're responsible for what truth we know. And I think there is a way to reconcile all the truths that we have. I believe the Muslims have a huge, vast section of truth. Now, I, I, you know, I, I, I come across this conflict all the time with people saying that Muslims don't have the truth. You know, and that um, you know they don't that that their entire religion is wrong. Everything about their religion is wrong. Well, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. You know, um, and I and I can put up a good argument. I can put up a good fight because guess what? I've read the Quran, and I really wonder how many so-called you know you, you know how many Christians are going to be burning in hell. I'll tell you, it's going to the number will probably be too too great for anyone to count. Because they go around calling themselves Christians. I said they go around calling themselves Christians. That doesn't make them a Christian. Good grief. I can go around calling myself a Muslim, patting myself on the back. But that doesn't make me a Muslim. I can go around patting myself on the Jew. Uh, you know, uh, praising myself for being a Jew. That doesn't make me a Jew. Okay. And actually, you know what? That's what over uh, probably 99% of these, these guys call themselves Jews do. Because I can tell you right now, the Bible says that uh, they call themselves Jews and are not, but do lie. Yet they're going around calling themselves Jews. 
So he doesn't make them a Jew. Listen, I could stick with all the dietary feasts and I could, you know, uh, well, I can't say I go get myself circumcised because I was circumcised on the seventh day anyway. I said, now, some would say, well, that makes you a Jew. No, it doesn't make me a Jew. See, but that's my point. That's my point. My point is, is I could, I could follow all the, the feasts of the tabernacles, and I could, I could, you know, uh, go to uh, uh, the synagogue, you know, religiously, and and I could, you know, abstain from all shellfish and and, and all pork, and uh, you know, do all the things, all the works, still wouldn't make me a Jew. Still wouldn't make me a Jew, you know. It's so funny, Ariel Sharon is so telling when he referred to the Jewish race. Because, boy, if that tells us anything, it, it should tell us that, that the people of Israel are racist. They value race so much. Oh, you know, and yet, when you really look at it, not even, you know, <laughs> not even 2% of the inhabitants of Israel have the mitochondrial DNA to identify them as a member of the quote-unquote Jewish race. Shame on them. Shame on them for taking pride in the flesh. And I'll tell you something else. Okay, If you think you're something and that you're superior to any other people in this world because you belong to some particular race, you're a racist. Get over it. You're a racist. If you really believe that your race renders you superior to any other race on the in the human race, okay, the human race, all right, that's that's what I call it. But anyway, if you believe your particular race gives you any superior advantage to any other group of people in the human race, you're a racist. You're you're a supremacist. You think you're supreme to other races because you belong to a particular race. You really think it's that easy to be supreme? Think again. Think again, my friend, because every dog has his day. And you look at history, and you see how the rise and the fall of all these great civilizations, what advantage do they have? They're just, you know, like the grass. You know, here today, gone tomorrow, cast into the fire and burned. They're, they're, listen, race does not give you any supreme advantage. You will be limited. Everything is a trade-off. I'm limited all the time. I just gave you an example of how, you know, because my melanin content, and I do have a lot of melanin. I can see all the freckles in my, my arm here. I have a lot of melanin in my skin. You know, and in fact, I don't burn and blister like I used to when I was a young person because my body actually produced more of the melanin and actually built up protection over the years so that I actually do have some protection against the sun, right? But I'm just giving you an example of the trade-off, the trade-off, you know, this for that, this for that. You know, all humanity has been compromised by the enemy. All humanity, you know, even our sun... The, the sun's rays, you know, uh, are not what they used to be. The radiation from the sun is not even as I remember it when I was a child. The sun is not as friendly as it used to be. It's becoming, you know, a glaring enemy of humanity. It's not nearly what it used to be. Jesus died for all people. Jesus died for all nations. I can't believe there are still people to, alive today calling themselves Christians and think that Christ only died for them because they're white, or Christ only died for them because, you know, they're, 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 they're purple, green, blue. This has really got to stop. I mean, people, my goodness. We are living in what century, and we're still on this? Like, for me, I just, you know, I was talking to a brother here, okay, uh, a, a brother of African uh, ancestry, and, uh, you know, he, he, was, he was warning me that this, is still alive and well and I, I couldn't believe him because you know where I'm from racism anyone who's racist well, we laugh at them because we think that they are so um, backward okay we make jokes about the KKK we think they're the most backward minded retarded people that ever lived all right up here where I'm from 
Okay, because we live, I mean, we live with in harmony with so many native people. You know, it's it's just, I don't know, it's just unthinkable. Racism? There's no room for racism where I'm from. Okay, it, it, we, we think of that as people of another time. You know, back in the early 1900s, there used to be racists. That's how we think. Okay, that's our view. But I guess um, I stand corrected. Racism is alive and well. Yet Jesus died for all. Anyway, I wanted to get to uh, the fact that uh, the shedding of blood has got to stop. You know, the shedding of blood is, is sacrificial. And the sacrifice is made to the glory of the God of this world. It's not made to honor Jesus Christ who shed his own blood for our sakes. And you can't top that sacrifice, people. I don't care how many animals you sacrifice. I don't care how many human beings you sacrifice. You can't top the sacrifice of the person of the Almighty God. You cannot do that. The blood has been shed. It is finished. You cannot top that sacrifice. So who will receive your sacrifice? God won't. God will not receive your sacrifice. If, you're, if you are sacrificing the blood of little children for the good, for the good, think again. Because the only entity that will receive your sacrifice is the devil. Do you really want to serve the devil? Do you really want to serve Satan? Because that's what the shedding of the blood of children, innocent children and women, that's what that is. That's a sacrifice to the devil. And all you mamas out there who abort your babies, that's what you're doing. You're sacrificing to the devil. Yeah, that's right. Every abortion is a sacrifice to the devil. You see, you cannot top the blood of Jesus. That, that's something I need to make very clear. You cannot beat the blood of Jesus. Nobody can make a greater sacrifice than the sacrifice that the Almighty God made when he sacrificed his own person, his own person, singular person, on that cross. That's why he did it. That's why nobody can tell God, God, you don't know what it means to humble yourself. No entity in the whole universe knows humility more than the Almighty God. We are without excuse. We can't tell God He doesn't understand or He doesn't know what it's like. Because He does. And that's why I am so opposed to the killing of children and women by these soldiers and by these, these, these violent men who think they're doing God a favor. You know what? You can't do God any favors. He's God. What makes you think you can do God anything? You, what makes you think you can... You know, the only thing you can do to the glory of God is to give God the praise and to prayer. That's the only thing that you can do to magnify the Almighty God. You can't do God any favors. You think by slaughtering little children and shedding their blood that you're doing God a favor? Seriously? Are you so arrogant? Are you so conceited that you think you're something before God? You think you're going to do something for God? Really? You have a lot to learn. You have a lot to learn. You're no better than these televangelists, you know, begging for money on television, thinking that God wants our money. <laughs> you know, if God really wanted money, he could make it himself. He's so powerful and so capable. You know, we, we all think we're going to do God a big favor here, eh? You know, as if we can do anything for God. May God have mercy on us all. Listen, God God bless you. Thank you for listening. I hope that you got something out of this. Uh, this is, uh, concludes my um, Talk to My Computer series. Uh, it's good to be back. Uh, thank you all for your prayers. 
And uh, I hope you keep listening because I have a lot to share with you. And um, I really do believe that what I have to say has value. I think God has blessed me with a little bit of wisdom to pass on to the next generation uh, and all those who really do have hearts for God and are willing to humble themselves before the Almighty One. God bless you and thank you for listening.